Hey, what's happening? This is Jim with Real World PDR. So I'm gonna do the intro in my office of this video because it is f***ing hot outside. Who the fuck was that to sing about Indiana girls, Indiana nights? That was Tom Petty. Tom Petty. Tom Petty, you're an idiot. You know what Indiana girls like in 107 degrees f***ing nighttime temperatures? They're f***ing smelly. Nobody's spending any time with them. Those ladies. I'm not made for this. Look at me, I'm pasty white. Do have a glorious beard, but that doesn't help in the in the summertime. Yes, yeah, so we're doing the intro to this. So somebody worked on this truck already. Why? I wish they hadn't. So now our job is not only fix the dent, but to fix what they have screwed up on this vehicle. Now, how I normally handle this is I usually, if it's the customer's fault, I usually charge them more because frankly, it's more work for me to unscrew what they did then to fix the damage that was there originally. That's gonna be a judgment call on your part. That's how I choose to do it. In this scenario, some other dent guy decided that he was gonna try his hand at this and he completely fucked it up. So because I have a big heart and some booze to drink, ah, fireball, it'll give you ulcers, but it'll also get you drunk. So let's do some tipsy dent work today with real world PDR. So this one was never supposed to be a standalone YouTube video. This is on the website, that's realworldpdr.com, but it did answer a few questions that some of you had asked me in the comments. So I'm gonna go ahead and play it anyway. Still be some great info here, so stick around for a minute. Next up, we are gonna use an ultra soft tip rod. This one's long. I'm gonna squeeze it through this tail light opening here. So we took out the tail light to access the bedside. We also took off the bed caps. So whenever I'm ready to do some more fine tuning work, I can work down. This tutorial is jam packed full of really good information. Surprisingly, even though it's not a beginner lesson, it's got tons of good stuff for beginners. Cause fact of the matter is when you first start out, there's a good chance you're going to cause things like this and knowing how to fix it. Well, that's going to be handy. There are tons of pitfalls that you can run into whenever you're doing this kind of work, working behind somebody that shouldn't have been working in the first place. And it's more difficult. It's going to make you wish you had the job to begin with. Son of a Hey, but that's okay because it provides us an excellent opportunity to learn from somebody else's mistakes. The more mistakes other people make that we can learn from, the less we have to make ourselves. The moral of this story was slow the hell down and have a dent map. Learn how to make your dent map at real world. Yeah, if you couldn't tell, I was kind of grumpy that I was doing this in the first place, but that's okay. We're going to cover all kinds of stand liner tools, actually some really sweet stand liner techniques. Uh, here's one coming up. You're going to love it. I'm telling you right now, don't you knock that one until you try it because I did and I felt stupid. Before I move on here, I'm going to go ahead and give another shout out to this here Pebble Paddle. One of you had emailed me about where to find this. Now, I'm sorry I didn't get with you. Uh, email me again. I'm also going to try to get some more information. So if this becomes a YouTube video, we can put it online. So this paddle has held up really, really well. Um, I do like that it's got this kind of rubbery soft thing on this side, so you can move crowns with it. But just in general, that's also nice because it's not such a sharp swack. Wait, what the hell did I just do? Let's try something. Swack. I could not have asked for a better outcome to that. Whenever you're doing some knockdown uh, and the wood, man, it just holds up far better than the paddles I was using before. I would go through one of those in a couple of months. I've been beating the shit out of this thing and you can hardly tell. So it's the pebble paddle. If I'm smart, if I get this thing figured out, I will put something here, some kind of contact by that info. This is made by a local dent guy, uh, technically a competitor of mine, but as I tell you, Make dent friends, not dent enemies, and unless they're assholes, then f them. But these guys aren't, they're really cool. So uh, I hope they sell a million billion of these. And here, here is where to get. He's gonna kill me, but it's gonna be funny. Worth it in the end, I think. Oh, hey. We'll see, but here we are undoing this damaged work. Now, staying off that texture was a challenge through this one. Also the concave panel. Within this lesson, we also did a mini lesson that is surprisingly in-depth about blending, how to, how it's gonna save your time, body position, all of those things. This tutorial has definitely been one of my favorite and that's why it is reserved for subscribers at realworldpdr.com. You should become one today. I mean, only if you wanna get good at this. 
If not, hey man, do your thing. But for way less than the price of a cup of Starbucks in the morning, you can have unlimited access to all of the content at realworldpdr.com. Let me know you're going to hear me ramble here in a second, but it is the most commonly asked question that I get asked, and this is my answer. I finally decided it was really hard for me to make a decision whether or not I was even going to post this, so listen up. Update. So I did say that there wasn't enough real estate in there for this Reaper rod. And I was dead ass wrong. So through the tail light, there's not really, but found this hole right here, a uh, big wide open hole. I, 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 I don't know how you missed that hole, but uh, go right through there. Man, all over it. And I'm telling you what, man, that nice soft push, I know I sound like a broken record with these damn real rods, but I'm not screwing with you. I am known to be honest to a fault to the point that I piss off tool manufacturers, piss off other notables in the PDR industry, and I am not screwing with you. This tool is probably the best PDR tool that I own. Just came out. Almost undoubtedly, this is the best PDR tool that I own. Uh, I don't lie. There's no point. You can't defend a lie. If I get caught up in a truth, I don't f***ing care. I am telling you the truth. This is the best PDR tool I own, the set of three. Buy them. This should be your second purchase, maybe even your first purchase when you go to learn PDR because this will look, work like any rod will. This works like a door tool. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. This three-piece set, should be anybody's very first PDR purchase. Now, I'm gonna think about that before I publish this, but the way I see it, yeah, yeah, I think so. Well, that's a bold statement, Cotton. Now, please understand that I have no affiliation with any tool manufacturer and I intend to keep it that way, uh, but for a guy who has, I believe, the first or second largest stand liner collection in all of North America, that took a lot for me to say. The tools that I use are the tools that I like, and I still believe in stand liner. I love the owner. I love Cass. He's one of my personal heroes. But man, these Reaper rods just make all of those great techniques, which is what makes those tools so special, even more accessible. So that's like two or three videos in a row that I've talked about these Reaper rods, and guess what? You're gonna hear about them again because I use what I use because I like them, so I'm probably gonna be using these a lot more in a lot more future videos. So if you're one of like six dudes who disliked that Reaper rod review video, you should probably just unsubscribe now because you're gonna hear more. Also, maybe stop being an asshole and make your own damn content, jerk. Enough name calling, back to the reason that we're here. Let's take a look at our progress so far. So we are getting this thing cleaned up. It is a challenge. Now check out these angles that I have to use. Now this is where, how to work in concave areas. Another mini lesson within this lesson came in. So make sure you are commenting, liking, subscribing, but definitely comment because I'm actually answering uh, directly some YouTube comments. That's why these clips even exist on YouTube right now. Also head over to the Facebook page for real world PDR training because some of the questions I'm answering come directly from that as well. In this lesson, we also cover light placement for concave panels. This is actually one that you can see repaired right here at Real World PDR YouTube. Uh, and pay attention to that one, guys, because that one should show you exactly how concave panels and light setup should go. As I mentioned before, this is a well over half hour full tutorial, but I couldn't get into all that because come to find out, you YouTubers have a short attention span. Half of you are gone at five minute mark of this video. Because of your guys' support, I am actually able to create content half the time work in the shop the other half now. So thank you guys so much for that. You can expect tons of mini les lessons right here on YouTube and all of my content will be on realworldpdr.com. If you haven't checked it out yet, you owe it to yourself to go do that. Thanks again. I plan on getting a new mini lesson uploaded to YouTube within the next couple of days. Peace.